Members of an independent panel in Japan have spent more than half a year trying to figure out what went wrong before and after the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi. On the St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. They released an interim report last month heaping blame on the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company. We're digging into the document on this week's Nuclear Watch. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellows on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's... The report faults authorities for failing to predict the tsunami, for the emergency procedures they followed, and for the way they communicated. I'm instructing residents who live within 10 kilometers of Fukushima Daiichi to evacuate. Zone first, what's on second? I don't know zone third. The report says the government issued unclear evacuation orders. Residents did not know where to go or what to do. You know the fellow's name? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean, the fellow's name on first base. Many of those residents faced a dilemma in the days after March 11th. Should they stay or should they go? Who is on first? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Who is on first? Here's one man's story. Masahiro Yamazaki is the vice principal of a high school in the town of Namie. His classrooms are within 10 kilometers of Fukushima Daiichi. I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? Yamazaki and other Namie residents left their homes on March 12th after the government expanded its evacuation zone to include their town. When you pay off the first base for every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. Many headed for a school 28 kilometers from the plant. I heard announcements telling us to evacuate immediately. Why not? The man's entitled to it. Who? I was trying to flee, but I didn't know what was happening. Well, all I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? Oh, no. That afternoon, a hydrogen explosion ripped through the reactor number one building at Fukushima Daiichi. It prompted the government to expand the evacuation zone to 20 kilometers. No, what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? That's what I'm trying to find out. Yamazaki was in charge of the shelter located inside the school he'd moved to. But he couldn't get information from state or local governments. He and many others worried about their safety. What's the guy's name on first base? What's the guy's name on second base? the government started using a system to forecast how the fallout would likely spread. The system predicted that radiation was moving toward Yamazaki and other residents. I am not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking about him. But the government didn't share its predictions with the public. And the interim report says the government didn't even plan on using the system when it arranged its evacuation. If I mention a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, oh, who's playing first? Stay off of first, will you? Oh, you? Yamazaki and about 1,200 others stayed in the shelter for about four days. I keep thinking I would have evacuated further away from the plant if I'd had the relevant information. There I go, back on third again. Well, I can't change their names. Will you please stay on third base? NHK World's Hiroshi Yokokawa joins us now. He's read through the interim report. So Hiroshi, what should the Japanese government do to improve its crisis management? What is it you want to know? What is the fuller's name on third base? What? The report says the government needs to be ready for any kind of accident and be ready to clearly communicate with residents. I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. My reading of the report suggests authorities did not understand the kinds of risks they were dealing with. <laughs> it notes they weren't prepared because they stuck to the idea of absolute safety. Why? And they carried out the same evacuation drill over and over again. I don't know. I just thought I'd ask you. They weren't ready for the scenario they faced on March 11th. Who is on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. The panel also mentioned the government needs to be uh, needs to keep the international community better informed. Oh, take it easy. Take What's the next step for the investigative panel? 
members plan to interview the lawmakers who were in Prime Minister Khan's cabinet at the time of the accident. Why? Because! Oh, he's centerfield. They are trying to find out how and why certain decisions were made. I don't know. Tell me the picture's name. Tamara. The panel will also investigate the history of nuclear power in Japan and Japanese social structure that contributed to the accident. Who is on? I'll break your arm! You say who's on first? Why come up here and ask? I want to know what's the pitcher's name! What's on second? I don't know! The, the, the final report is expected by the summer. You got a catcher? Yes! The catcher's name. Today! Today! And tomorrow's pitching. Now you've got it. Thanks, Hiroshi. Ten months have passed since the March 11th earthquake and tsunami and the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. But the task of rebuilding the stricken region is still far from complete. I can't help that. Over the next two days, we'll introduce some of the people who have been playing key roles in trying to revive northeastern Japan. In the first program, Japan's nuclear crisis minister, Goshi Hosono, talks about his plan to train nuclear safety regulators and build a center for advanced radiological medical treatment. All right. What, what do you want me to do? I believe training people about nuclear safety regulations remains the biggest challenge. Following the nuclear accident at Fukushima, we need regulators who will be firm in applying the rules. But I'm afraid the number of young people who want to pursue a career in the nuclear power industry may drop sharply. I would like to catch. Now, I'm being a good catcher. Tomorrow's pitching on the team and I'm catching. We hope to establish a training facility that will be open not only to people from Japan, but also from abroad. Tomorrow throws the ball and the guy up bunts the ball. Yes. It's important that they learn from a technological viewpoint about what happened at the Fukushima nuclear power plants. Now when he bunts the ball, me being a good catcher, I'm going to throw the guy out at first base. It's also important that they learn about the impact severe accidents can have on people's lives. So I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now the facility will teach about the mental and physical hardships local residents have suffered and about the steps they've had to take to decontaminate their schools, homes and properties. Well, that's the first thing you've said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about! In an interim report released in late December, a government panel said that it is important that more skilled technicians be trained. Hosono says that in order to make the best of the lessons learned from the Fukushima accident, it's vital that such a facility be opened in the prefecture. Well, that's all you have to do! Is to throw at the first base! Yeah. Now, who's got it? Naturally! I think Fukushima will be a place where people from around the world will come to learn about nuclear accidents. Who has it? Naturally. The scrapping of the damaged reactors at Fukushima Daiichi is expected to take up to 40 years. Part of training should focus on steps being taken to dismantle the reactors. Naturally. Naturally! Kosono says creating a center for advanced radiological medicine will also place Fukushima at the forefront of studies into the effects of radiation on human health. Okay. Now you've got it. I pick up the ball and I throw it the next I know you, you don't. You throw the ball to first base. Can go one day. After the Fukushima accident, people started to worry that children might develop cancer after drinking radioactive tainted milk. But the situation in Japan is different from the one after the accident in Chernobyl. Still, people are concerned. The government should closely monitor the health of local residents and provide necessary care for years to come. Then who gets naturally? The government policy of staying in close contact with the people of Fukushima should include providing radiological medicine and cleaning up the contaminated areas. Okay. All right. I throw a ball and actually you don't. You throw it to who? 
Japan wants to become a pioneer in these fields and will share the lessons learned with the international community. Naturally, well, that's it. Say it that way. On January 1st, a law covering the decontamination of the affected areas took effect. But it will still be a long time before a sense of normalcy returns to the lives of the people of Fukushima. That's what I said. You did not. I said I throw the ball to natural. You don't. You throw it to who? In the next part, we'll bring you an interview with Yoshihiro Murai, the governor of Miyagi Prefecture that's still struggling to recover from the March 11th tsunami. Naturally! Yes! Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner says the Iran sanctions must be put in place as soon as possible. But to make them effective, he needs to get another country on side. Geithner spoke exclusively with NHK World's Reiko Sakurai about the challenges he faces. So I throw the ball to first base and naturally gets no, it. No, you throw the ball to first base. Then who gets it? Naturally. How are you? Hi, Mr. Secretary. U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner is welcoming Japan's cooperation on the Iran sanctions. What were your thoughts on that, and could you play a little bit on what you've thought from throughout the meetings? That's what I'm saying! You're not saying that! Excuse me, folks. All right, I'm sorry, friend. Well, let me say that, you know, my sense is Japan is going to be with us in this, and it's going to work with us and with Europe to try to make sure that we're bringing additional pressure on Iran for the obvious reason we have a huge strategic interest together. Now, we have, a, we have a range of operational questions we have to work through, which we're starting to work through with them. And we're going to send a team here next week to consult in more detail on the technical questions. I throw the ball to Natchez! You throw it to who? Natchez! Right. Right. We'll say it that way. That's what I'm saying! Don't get excited now. Don't... But we'll, we'll work through these questions. I, I'm very confident Japan will be with us on this. But the proposed measures will be toothless if China doesn't join in. It is Iran's biggest oil client, buying nearly a third of exports. Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao expressed reluctance to join efforts to punish Iran when he met Geithner Wednesday in Beijing. But the Treasury Secretary is staying optimistic. Don't get it. I throw the ball to first base and who gets it? He better get it! And could I just go on and talk about the Chinese meetings you had? Um, did you sense any kind of change from what they have um, told you during the dialogues? Uh, I think they're very aware of the concern internationally that as we move to increase the pressure on Iran that uh, other countries don't make it easier for Iran to evade the impact of that additional pressure. I think China is very sensitive to that. Now they listened to us very carefully when I was there and uh, they've been actually very cooperative with the international community in this common objective because of course they share our interest in trying to make sure that Iran is complying with its international obligations. So again, we're at the relatively early stages in consulting with our partners on this question. We have some work to do with them and with Europe and with Japan and other countries around the world to try to make sure how we can put in place the most effective international approach. All right, now don't get excited. Take it easy. Hmm. The United States has to depend on Japan and other allies to block oil imports from Iran because it does not buy Iranian crude. The U.S. government says these sanctions are necessary to stop money from flowing to Iran, funds that could pay for the country's nuclear development. Reiko Sakurai, NHK World, Tokyo. Now I throw the ball to first base, whoever it is drops the ball so the guy runs to second. Mm -hmm. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it? I don't know. I don't know. Throws it back to tomorrow. A triple play. Yeah, it could be. Another guy gets up and it's a long fly ball to be called. Why? I don't know. He's on third and I don't care. What was that? I said, I don't care. Oh, that's our shortstop. Here it!